Let's review. Glaciers can be thought of as moving mountains of ice. As they move over the landscape, they cause glacial erosion, which is defined as the carving and shaping of the land beneath a moving glacier. There are two main processes of glacial erosion. Plucking is the erosion and transport of large chunks of rocks that stick to and get picked up by the glacier. Abrasion is the erosion that occurs when particles scrape against each other. It works in a similar fashion to sandpaper. There are a number of features and landforms that result from glacial erosion. Glacial striations are long scratches that form in the direction of glacial movement. A cirque is a round hollow with steep sides that resembles an amphitheater, maybe one that could hold a circus. If a cirque traps water, it can result in a small mountain lake of trapped water called a tarn. A glacial horn is conveniently named because it looks like a horn jutting up from the earth. It is actually a sharp angular peak formed when several glaciers erode a mountain in different directions. If two glaciers erode opposite sides of a mountain, we end up with a sharp narrow mountain ridge called an A-rate, which provides an A rating when it comes to scenic views. Glacial erosion can also create a roche montagne which is a mass of rocks carved by a passing glacier. The rock formation has a smooth, rounded side caused by abrasion and a steep, ragged side where rocks were plucked from the surface. Glacial view. This is a view of an active trunk glacier with associated tributary glaciers. There is more snow accumulation than melting, so the glacier is growing. Post-glacial view. When there is more melt than snow accumulation, the glacier recedes. The landscape reflects the years of glacial erosion. Main glacier. This is the largest flowing area of the glacier. Medial moraine. When a small tributary merges with the main trunk glacier, the debris on the lateral moraines becomes lines of material carried along in the main glacier. Truncated spurs. A glacier will cut away layers of rock and surface soil as it moves downhill. Truncated spurs can be seen where hillsides are bisected by the glacier. Horn. The peaks associated with glaciers. Horns are sharp after years of glacial erosion. Cirque. At the peak of the mountain, the valley in the snow accumulation area of the glacier is enlarged and hollowed out by glaciers, producing a rounded cirque valley. Arete. An arete is a sharp, knife-like divide or crest formed between two cirques by alpine glaciers. Coal, a natural pass or low notch in an arete between opposed cirques. Paternoster lakes. These are a series of lakes strung together by a single stream or braided stream system. These occur where a glacier has receded and is created by terminal moraines. Hanging valley. This valley is formed by a tributary that ends at a cliff above a larger trunk glacial valley. Hanging waterfall. A waterfall that forms in a tributary hanging valley, falling into the valley formed by the main trunk glacier. U-shaped glacial trough. After the trunk and tributaries of a glacier recedes, a U-shaped glacial trough remains. Let's review. Glacial deposition is a settling of sediments left behind by a moving glacier. As glaciers move over the land, they pick up sediments and rocks. The mixture of unsorted sediment deposits carried by the glacier is called glacial till. Piles of till deposited along the edges of past glaciers are called moraines. Lateral moraines are deposits found along the sides of a past glacier and terminal moraines are deposits found at the farthest point that a past glacier reached. 
It might help your understanding of moraines if you think of a glacier as a bulldozer pushing through a mound of dirt. As the bulldozer pushes forward, some dirt is left behind in piles along the sides of its path. These would be the lateral moraines. If the bulldozer backs up and leaves a pile of dirt at the farthest point it reaches, this pile would be the equivalent of a terminal moraine. This goes back to our discussion of how Long Island, New York was created. A couple of glaciers pushed rocks and soil south, forming a terminal moraine. Then the glacier retreated, meaning it melted, leaving behind Long Island. Glaciers are kind of like litter bugs, because they drop materials wherever they please, and sometimes they leave behind boulders so large that they could never be moved there by human power. These are called glacial erratics and they are described as big rocks deposited in unusual places due to glacial movement. For example, you could find a huge limestone boulder sitting in an area where most of the bedrock is made up of granite. These misplaced boulders were aptly named because the term erratic is used to describe something that is unusual. In fact, you could say that erratics are big rocks deposited in erratic places. A drumlin is another example of a deposit left behind by a glacier. It's described as an elongated hill composed of glacial till. Unlike moraines, which form in rows of sediment, drumlins look like the backs of whales as they breach the surface of the ocean, and where there is one drumlin, you will likely find others. This is because they are usually found grouped together in drumlin fields. These fields do not only leave behind clues that the glacier once passed through the area, they also tell us which direction the glacier was moving. This is because all drumlins in a drumlin field align themselves in the direction of ice flow. Bunker Hill in Massachusetts is a famous drumlin. In fact, you might find it easier to recall this term if you picture a soldier in the Battle of Bunker Hill playing a drum as he walks up the drumlin. By knowing the location of the terminus, Scientists can determine if a glacier is retreating or advancing. Retreating means the leading edge of the glacier does not travel as far as it previously did because ablation exceeded accumulation. Advancing means the leading edge of the glacier moves forward faster than the rate of ablation. The glacier mass balance is the balance between accumulation and ablation. If there is equal balance, then a glacier is said to be in equilibrium, and it does not change in size. If there is more growth than melting, then there is a positive mass balance, and the glacier will advance. If there is a loss of mass due to faster wasting than growth, then there is a negative mass balance, and the glacier will retreat.